Hey everybody, this is Daryl, a.k.a. The D from the Simply Incredible Podcast, and today I am doing my Salem Vintage Comic Book and Toy Con Hall. <laughs> I think that's the official name. I'm probably way off on it. But it's a, it's a comic book toy show from, from uh, Salem, Virginia. I uh, went there today, picked up a lot of good books, and uh, let's see, one of my kind of grails that I actually did not have written down on my top 10 for 2018, which should have been on there, should have, should have, should have been on there, but at, when I did my list, I didn't even think about this book for some reason, but got it today, and remember I said when I'm not getting like a whole short box full of books, I got about a quarter of a short box full of books, <laughs> all right, let's see where we're going to start at. All right, and as always, if you see a price on these, that is not what I paid for them. I'm, I know a lot of people are, are like, yeah, I'm not going to ask for a discount. Man. Don't ask for a discount. You know, I'm like this. You can, I mean, if somebody's got a uh, hundred dollars on a book, don't say you take five dollars for it. They, you know, they'll, they'll be like, you can take, you can pay one twenty or get away from me. But, if, you know, they have like 100 on, you, know, you take 90 for it. You know, that's fair. You know, worst thing, you know, like, no, nah, I can't quite do that. Uh, I can probably take 95. You know what? Worst thing comes to worst, you still pay 95 instead of 100. You know, but like I say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because most, most people will kind of work with you a little bit on it. All right. We'll start off with some Batman comics. Shocking that I picked up Batman books, right? <laughs> I was uh, these are actually not in any order. I'm just as I, as I come to them. Uh, this is issue 394. There we go. And uh, th uh, 339. Again, all of these are still working on my run of Batman. As I finish 400 up to current, except. Um, New 52 issue one, but everything else I have. So, you know, so now I've decided to go from 300 up. <laughs> Why? I don't know. At some point I'll be like, let's go from 200 up. Uh, issue number, I should have told you this too. Issue number 363. Some reason in my mind, I think I might have this one, but eh, maybe not. I'm not sure. This is the, well, actually this one in the next book are two of them that I think I already have. But this one I picked up for a reason. It is number 457. This is the correct version of this one. There's also an error version. On the inside, I wish, oh, you know what? I got a second. I'll show you the error, or the, the correct one on this one. And I think this one is actually a lot harder to come by than the correct version of it. So you got that right there on the inside. You probably won't be able to see it real well, but right down here uh where is it at uh it tell it says batman and then it has the the issue number 457 on the error version it's got zero 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 right there so that's the difference in them and if you see the barcode that is the corrected version if you see anything other than the barcode i can't remember if it's just uh words there um which would be the direct edition instead of the the uh whatchamacallit edition the newsstand edition so that's how you can tell you don't even have to open it up to to look at it because for the longest time i knew there was a difference but i didn't know you know what it was or how to find out so pass on the information the 411 like i say this one it, in my experience looking for them this one was a lot harder to find so there you go and when you do find it it's hard to uh, be in really good shape on them, too. That's, that was another problem I was finding with them. Uh, next, Batman. Let's put these two later, just because. Why not? Uh, number uh, 396. Right there. Batman is on film. And Batman number 395. Don't shoot the bat. There we go. Uh, the only reason I did that because these two are in the 200s. <laughs> Number 299. And this one was in Mylar, so that's exciting. 
Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Next is number 281. And I say, all these were, were pretty cheap. So I was like, yeah, let's go and pick those up. Uh, and it seems like not that long ago, these Batmans, like the 200s and stuff, and the 300s were like twice as much as they are now. And again, I got something on my hat. <laughs> I know, just that threw me off there for a second. But it seems like to me they, they've actually come down a little bit. I don't I don't know why. Because I, I was thinking like like these books, I know they're you know not keys or anything. But it seems like to me uh, they used to be up in about the $20 range. Uh, and like this one right here, uh, I don't even think I paid $5 for it. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, next, uh, Fantastic Four number 286. And you, when you have an awesome Phoenix cover, yes, please. Yes, please. So, I figured, yeah, let's go and pick that up. That's awesome. With the Phoenix on there. Uh, you got some of the uh, Uncanny X-Men. Special appearance from the Uncanny X-Men. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Next, uh, these are ones I absolutely love. The 25th Anniversary Issues. It is Daredevil number 2. 36 I love these covers there's so many of them I've only got a few of them but I love these covers with the, the border going all the way around them absolutely awesome uh, let's put this one over here <laughs> next is Batman Detective Comics number 484 awesome uh, Batgirl appearance also in it I didn't even realize this uh, the Origin of Robin. That's pretty cool. Awesome Batgirl appearance with her dad. Which I think is awesome. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Gordon is, is Batgirl's dad. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Barbara Gordon and Commissioner Jim Gordon. Yeah, Jim Gordon. James Gordon, Jim Gordon, whichever. So I thought that's pretty cool. Detective Comics number 484. Next, let's go through some old school Wonder Woman, number 272. And we got the White House there, the American flag, the eagle, all patriotic. So, yeah, I had to pick that up. Got to have some good patriotism going on. Next, number uh, 263. Even with all her powers, Wonder Woman is no match for the gaucho, a real man. I just thought, like, that's hilarious. The Gaucho. A real man. <laughs> All right, I'll get that one up. This is one I bought because I don't know why. I see so many people on here selling books like this. It is uh, Wonder Woman 221, a bondage issue. Oh, she's in bondage. She's tied up. She's in bondage. Like, why do people get so, like, oh, it's bondage. Ooh, like, it's like, it's a comic book. <laughs> I've seen some people who kind of get all excited about it. I'm like, just a comic book, guys. Next is, this is goes really well with uh, one of my last hauls. You saw uh, Daredevil number 181. And I picked up 182 in the Mylar. This is a cover I absolutely love. Really, really like this cover. So I was like, yeah, definitely got to get that. For is that sleep of death what dreams may come. So, yeah. Last one was the death of Electra, And now you see Daredevil hugging her tombstone. Which, I love that cover. That is awesome. Alright. And, as I said, I was almost done. No. I, I'm not almost done. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, uh, fellas, get back in the bag. All right. Let's sit that right there for a second, put those right there. Next is, and I know nothing about this, but it is Amazon number one from Lone Star Press, and it is signed by Bill Williams II. 
I think it's Bill Williams the second. Williamson the second. Bill something the second. If you can see it. I was like, it was in a cheap band, so I was like, why not? Why not? And like I said, I know nothing about this book, but I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, let's give it a shot. Why not? Next is, uh, this is one that I've heard a lot about. I've never read any of these, but it was in a dollar bin. I'm like, well, it's got to be worth at least a dollar. It is Bone Number One. Like that's in a dollar bin because I've always heard that was about like a ten to fifteen dollar book. It's like for a dollar, I'll take it. There we go. Uh, come on, fellas, work with me, with me, not against me. Uh, next, I just saw, I was like, yeah, I'll get that. Uh, Charlton Comics. Uh, issue four, I'm trying to find a year. It looks like, uh, May, I think it's 1978. It is the Bionic Woman. That issue four, yes, issue four. Okay, and this is in a dollar bin. It, it's not meant by any stretch. It's got some stuff going on down the spine. Uh, it's got some creasing and stuff going on. But, uh, the Bionic Woman. <laughs> Love that show back in the day when I was a kid. So, yeah, I don't get that. I've, Honestly, it's the first one I've seen a Bionic Woman comic from that era until 20 minutes later, I saw another one at another table. I don't know which issue that one was, but it, I think he had like $40 on it. It wasn't the same issue. It might've been issue one. I don't know. But I was just like, you know what? The Bionic Woman, I'll get the Bionic Woman issue number one or number four, excuse me. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. I just saw this cover. I absolutely love it. And I believe this is a, a Daryl Banks cover, I believe. Uh, Remembering the Hero, Green Lantern number 81. Love that cover. Love that Joker. That is awesome. You got um, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Uh, there's Flash back there. Gosh, all, I mean, all the superheroes, Aquaman way back there. And, you know, just holding a candle. So, I'm like, that's pretty sweet. And so, I don't know what's going on with the story, but obviously, someone has passed. And I love the cover on that. I was like, yeah, I get that. You know, the dollar bin. Next, The Incredible Hulk. Um, it, it's homage to Incredible Hulk number one. This is issue number 393, special 30th anniversary issue you know when the foil covers so i was like oh that is so awesome since i i'll never get the uh you know that first issue like let's let's get that so yeah 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 pretty sure i don't have this look i'm gonna get it okay i've already got it oh, well. so the strangest man of all time is he man or monster or is he both there we go awesome foil cover next uh, i think last time i picked up um uh, this is just imagine stan lee if stan lee did some dc stuff this is what you might get uh with uh jim lee if i'm not mistaken i think jim lee uh, did some stuff with these as well uh i can't remember for sure oh on the one issue jim lee did some work on it that i had i believe that was wonder woman with Scott McDaniel creating Aquaman. Stan Lee was Scott McDaniel creating Aquaman. I don't know how many different ones is in this run, but I think this will be my second and third. This is with uh, Kevin McGuire creating The Flash. I think that's kind of a cool concept if Stan Lee had done DC stuff. So I was like, that's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'll definitely check those out. Next, uh, Identity Crisis. I have the run of these, but I did not have this variant cover for issue one. I was like, I'll go ahead and pick that up. That's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. And like I say, I, I've been trying to avoid dollar bins, and then I jumped into some dollar bins. They suckered me in. Doggone it. <laughs> Next, uh, I have this one already, but I was like, yeah, I'm getting it again. 
This is Phoenix, the untold story. I have the newsstand and the direct edition. Now I have one of these, I, I believe it is the direct edition over here, I think. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and get that. That is awesome. And I, I've read this really good story too. So if you ever get a chance to get one, definitely check out the story in that as well. Really, really good. I think that's uh, Burn that did the cover, I think. I think that's who that says. Really, really good stuff at uh, Phoenix. Uh, this one, I have uh, Catwoman Triumphant. And now we have Penguin Triumphant. I, I haven't read the Catwoman. I've had it. Gosh, I've had it for a long time. Should have read that by now. So I really don't know anything about this one. I, I know I've just seen Catwoman and Penguin and I don't know if there's more issues or not. I would think so. I would think Two-Face would probably have one as well. But I'm not sure. I know there's at least those two. Ostrander, Stanton, and Smith. So, I mean, yeah, let's get that. So, now I've got at least those two in the triumphant run. I don't. I have to look it up to find out if there's more. Again, I saw this in a dollar bin. Had to get it. Uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, uh, issue number one, star studded first edition, or first issue, excuse me, star studded first issue, Spock and Kirk on the cover, but yeah, I'll definitely get that, that's awesome, Lee Aloha cover, Lee Aloha, I think it's, I don't know Lee Aloha, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, dollar bin fine. Next is, I've already got this one, but in a dollar bin, I've got to pick up another one. It is uh, Batman number 497, The Breaking of the Bat, where Bane has just destroyed Batman over his knee. Uh, uh, this part, you know, on some of them, this little part's not here, but like his back is right over that knee. So I was like, why not for a dollar? You get another one of those. The Breaking of the Bat. A very kind of iconic cover to that. Usagi Yojimbo. I did not find very many of these today. I found this one in a dollar bin. I found one in a $20 bin. I'm like, I'm not paying $20 for one. But it is Dark Horse Comics number 77. Love me some Usagi. Uh, Usagi? Wake up, buddy. <laughs> Some Usagi no Jimbo. Next, uh, this is one. I, I was actually trying to win this one in some auctions. I never could do it. It is Transformers number 11. I believe this is the first Jetfire. Pretty sure this is the first Jetfire. I would love to find a number one. Those things have just, in the last, I don't know, year? Maybe two years, it's really jumped up in value a lot. So I definitely want to find one of those. Uh, number two, you got uh, Optimus versus um, uh, Megatron on the cover. Awesome. But I actually found two of them. That's not too shabby. Next is some Savage Wolverine number five. Some awesome Frank Cho artwork on there. I found a couple more of them, but they were in the $5 bins. This one was in a cheap bin. So I was like, yeah, you know, for the cheap bin, yeah, I'll definitely pick that up. That is awesome. Savage Wolverine number five. Uh, I have number one, I believe, uh, that was has a Frank Show signature and a little sketch on it that I had done, um, had uh, slabbed by CBCS. So to confirm the uh, signature on it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these right here, this is a run I, I've been seeing uh, bits and pieces of it around. So I finally said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can't get uh, this run eventually. So this is my start to the run for V for Vendetta. Uh, issue number four. Right there. Alan Moore and David Lloyd. Next is issue five. I'm pretty sure issue one, two uh, will probably be pretty expensive, but 
Yeah, we'll see. Issue number six. There we go. Issue number seven. Right there. And issue number 10. Oh, it's 10 in the set. I was thinking it was 12 in the set. So 10 in the set. So this means I have half the set. So I need one, two, three, four, and nine to uh, complete this run. Wait. One, two, three, eight, and nine. My bad. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I didn't realize uh, 10 was, I, I thought it was a 12 issue set, but it's only a, an eight issue set. And this is from 1989. 88 through 89. I did not know that. V for Vendetta. Loved the movie. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Alrighty. Next is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this is uh, Mirage Publishing number two. Um, to be honest, I know nothing about this one. I just saw it. I was like, that's a pretty cool cover on that. So, yeah. You know me, love my turtles, so I figured I'd give that a shot. See what's going on with this one. Next is Spawn number 113. I uh, had a couple more spawns I was going to get, but it was one of those things, uh, 10 for a certain price. And if I started going more than that, then I had to get to 20 books. I was like, eh, it's cool. We'll stop with, with that. I think it's actually 11 for the price of 10. So... Like, I didn't feel like going to, to uh, 22 for the price of 20. All right, now, if you guys watch the podcast, you know Troy has kind of jokingly said that if we have a giveaway, we'll give out the no prize. No prize being you get no prize, but thank you anyway. Well, I saw this, and I'm like, this is going in the giveaway. One of them. I got two. One for me, one for the giveaway. It is... No prize. <laughs> it is no prize book. I was like, really? Last week when I was in Charlotte, or the week before last, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before last, I saw these. And the same guy was here at the Salem show, so I was like, ha, ah, there it is. So there we go. The no prize book. <laughs> Mighty Marvel's Most Massive Mistakes. <laughs> so I was like, heck yeah. And we got a little... Stan Lee-ish over there. I'm pretty sure that's Stan. Looks very Stan Lee-ish. Kind of in a Doom outfit there. So I was like, one of these is going into the uh, giveaway and one is going into my collection. There we go. Next is a Star Wars number 95. I want to get the, the at least the last 10 issues. It ended on issue 107 in the initial run. Man, the, I did not see a single book from uh, 100 through uh, 190, uh, 190, <laughs> number 100 through 107. I saw up to 99, and the person had too much on that one, so I had to pass on it. Next, a couple Lady Death covers. This is issue one, July 2002. That's a beautiful cover. Uh, it's uh, Reimagined. That's a, that's a beautiful cover. Look at that cover. That is awesome. Drinking blood. <laughs> so I was like, heck yeah, that is a beautiful cover. Nice lady death. And I saw this one and I don't. Lady death versus purgatory. Wow, that's an awesome cover. And it is a foil cover. I don't know uh, the foil uh, lettering on it. I don't know if that's a variant or not. But I saw that cover. I was like, wow, that's a beautiful cover. I'm trying to cut back on the buying just for the cool covers. But that was a cool cover. I couldn't say no to that. I wonder if that's a wraparound. Because sometimes these are wraparounds. Let's see. No, this is not. Um, November 1999. This is a one shot, maybe. Oh, <laughs> November 1999 is when uh, WrestleMania 2000, the video game, comes out. So there you go. <laughs> awesome cover. And uh, this actually does not say if it's a variant or not. May they might not even be a variant. 
but it's an awesome cover. And the art in it's really, really good. Written by uh, uh, Brian Paluto, who I met in San Diego and did not realize I met him until later. Uh, cover painting by uh, Dorian Clevenger. Clevenger. At first I thought I was like, Dorian Cleavage? That can't be right. <laughs> Dorian Clevenger. So, thought that was an awesome look. Let's show you guys right here so you can really get to see it out of the bag with less glare on it. And if you can see, the lettering is, is foil. So, I thought that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Then again, most Lady Death covers are pretty cool. So, there you go. Next, almost done, fellas and ladies. Uh, next is Birds of Prey number six. I love this cover. I don't know who did it, but I love that cover. That is an amazing looking cover. I mean, it looks like uh, Lady Deathstrike from um, uh, X-Men 2, I think. Love that cover. That is a great cover. I have to find out who did that. Uh, Gail Simone writing. I love me some Gail Simone writing. So that that's just extra gravy on that goodness. Let's see. Okay, let's go with these three first, and then I got. Don't forget, I still got my two. Uh, man, this video is almost thirty minutes long. Oh my goodness, my two uh, other uh, one Grailish cover. So uh, book. So I'm sorry it takes so long. Alf. Ah, number 27. When I was little, I think I had almost this entire run. And the other day, I just happened to be flipping through Amazon. It had Alf. I'm like, uh, okay, I got to go back in time and watch this. So I've watched the first, uh, I think, two uh, two episodes again. Uh, number 33, Wanted Alf. Remember back in the day, I had uh, they had a trading cards, like baseball cards, but Alf cards. I had the whole run of those. And so they had uh, cars that had stickers with them as well. I had all of those. Because I, I loved Alf when I was a kid. This one I thought was especially awesome. Alf and the Uncanny uh, X Mel Men. For those who don't know, he was from uh, M uh, Malmac. And they had the, I guess their version of the X Men. Issue number 44. I was like, heck yeah, I'm getting that. Yeah, definitely had to pick that up. Next, Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror number five. Yeah, whenever I can find these uh, these Simpsons books, yeah, I try to get them. Uh, he had a couple more, but they were ones I already had, so I passed on those. So I was like, heck yeah. More Simpsons glory from the past. Finally, I'm sorry that took so long. I didn't think it was going to take that long, but it did. Next is uh, the two kind of big books I picked up today. This one, honestly, I'd never seen it. And I saw it from across the room. And I, I just looked up. I was like, what is that cover? That is awesome. What is that? And it is uh, Batman 50, which right off the bat. But it's one of the variants. It's the Josh Middleton... Um, uh, selfish cover. Uh, it's the black and white. It is limited to 1500. That is gorgeous. And if you can see it, I don't know if you'll be able to see it as well, but her eyes on this are amazing. Uh, the detail in her dress on here is gorgeous. Now I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but, uh, in the comic books, that Joelle Jones actually made her suit, her uh, outfit, uh, her wedding dress. Um, she's the one that actually come up with everything about it, design, designed it. That's the word I'm looking for. I met her in San Diego, and I, if I had known that at that time, I would have asked her about it. But I later heard that she actually designed it, and it is gorgeous. So, um, and I think it was like, say, 1500 made of that. So, heck yeah. And last, but not least, hold on one second. It's on low power mode, but don't worry. Don't worry. Last, but not least, another one of those Grail-ish books that I've been looking for. And again, this is the one I should have had on my top 10 for the year. And I didn't. I don't know how I missed this, but it's all right. I got it now. 
It is Fantastic Four Annual Number Three from 1965. It is the wedding of Sue and Reed. Sue Storm to Reed Richards. Now, one of the best things in this book, uh, let me see if I can find it. I know, I know I'm taking way too long with this and I apologize. But for me, one of the best panels in this book, ah, let's get that out of there. Very nice cover on here. Very, very nice. Let's see if we can find it way in the back. Uh, let's see here. I know I'm taking too long and I do apologize. Uh, these two guys try to kind of crash the wedding. Uh, where is it, doggone it? Ah. Well, anyway, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, they try to crash the wedding. And it's absolutely hilarious. And they won't let them in because they're like, you're not on the list. Oh, no wonder. At the back, it turns to a different story. No wonder. <laughs> How many different stories do we have in here? I'm sorry this is taking so long, guys and gals. But this is one of those panels that I absolutely love. Uh, we got a wedding story before we get to the actual story. Let's just get to the wedding. Oh, well, I promise as a Christian it's in here somewhere. Where's it at, dog on it? <laughs> wow. I got to reread the book. I know. I just wasted three minutes of your time, and I apologize, guys and gals. But it's in there somewhere. <laughs> but the, that's all I got. Remember, check out my 1,200 subscriber giveaway, and you guys, have an incredible day.